Welcome, I'm Bill Wake. We're here working on a calculator for kilts, for kilt makers. And uh, we've, we've got a screen that does design of pleats. And I'm trying to move it to something that's more graphical so that people can just kind of drag values around or um, see the results in a graphical way. And um, one of the things along the way, we've got this notion of a pleat designer and it's got a lot of stuff in it. And I think part of what's going on, I, I presented this uh, last night. We have a geek night on Tuesdays and uh, um, we went through the code for this a little bit and it became clear to me that the the object that pleat designer represents, it at the heart of it, it's got this equation that says your hip is equal to your pleat width times your number of pleats. Okay, so if you have two inch pleats and you got 10 of them, you're going to get a 20 inch hip. And the if you change the pleat width or the count or the hip, um, those three change in a coordinated way. And also you can change the amount of fabric devoted to a pleat and, and that makes it a change too. Um, so we we have this relationship present but embedded and part of the problem with that is we as we try and maintain this thing if you change the hip you're going to change the count and the and the pleat the, changing the hip sorry changing the account or the pleat also goes in and tries to change things so it's kind of a recursive or um I don't know, re recurrent maybe. I'm not sure the right word for it, but um, you know, it's it's a uh, a looping system in a sense, and it stabilizes and then it's fine. Um, but we we try and block that looping. We just want to say, if I set this hip, I'm going to set the count and the width. I don't want you to do a bunch of updates after that. So we got some mechanism in there that's repeated for that. And uh, it, it what became clear to me is that we should find a way to. Um, uncouple that relationship, the sort of the system of equations at the heart of the pleat design process. And um, we should make that a separate object. And then the rest of this stuff is sort of derived from that. And, and the relationship then is highlighted in this, this new object. So even though the goal is, uh, let's see, this stuff you know, these, these new graphical versions of things that we, we sort of did them as separate standalone drawings. We haven't done them as components yet. Um, they're the goal, but along the way, we're going to look at pleat designer. I guess I should go back to full size here. So here's the pleat designer interface. It's got, I don't know, let's pull out the strings. There's only a couple, the pleat type, and then down towards the last gap label is a string. Um, then we have the published fields. I guess I should have classified these better. I just put them in the order we have them, which may be its own own reflection. But we have published fields, ideal hip, set, sets per pleat, pleat count, and pleat width. And those are variables, so they're kind of a two-way binding sort of thing. Um, and then the others are sort of calculated from other variables. You know, they're derivative of those or a function of those. They're not needed for the equation at the heart of things. So uh, let's let's take that from there. All right, I just ran tests, so everything's green. I don't know if anything's ready to be checked in. Okay, we can let that go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so what this is, what we're going to do is sort of an extract. We're going to extract a class. And I, I'm not sure what to do about testing it directly. And maybe, maybe that's okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do, well, we don't have a good, the tool set isn't good at doing this, so I'm gonna do it by hand. Um, and I'm gonna do it kind of piece by piece until we get everything pulled out. All right, so. Um, let's imagine a variable. <laughs> um, we need to hold a pleat equation, equations. And we'll put it in here for now. I don't know if that's the right place. Um, but 
there's this new object I'm imagining into existence called pleat equations. And let's see. I guess we'll just go put it in. Switch file, yes. Complete equations. Okay. All right. Now, no harm in that. Yeah. Where else is it complaining? Is it all on my new my new thing? Okay, fine. All right, um, let's check that in. Um, add new class pleat equations to be extracted from pleat designer. Okay. Now, um, what what I'm imagining is given given our equations, I think there's four things it needs to manage. It needs to deal with the hip, the ideal hip, the pleat count, the pleat width, and the pleat fabric. Now, pleat fabric is a derived value, but it's still driving, a change in that drives drives these other things. Okay, so, um, which would be the one to start with? Well, let's let's just let's start with a ideal hip. Okay, so I'm going to make it so that so when you set the hip, we do establish non-required variables. All right, now I don't I don't think our object should worry about nil. Okay, I think our object like this is sort of the heart of our of our goal. Okay. And so I want to make a method. I'm going to call it set hip and it's going to pass in ideal hip and maybe pleat fabric. Okay. Um So we're sort of extracting a method in a way. I kind of want to extract this into here. So function set hip, and then I'm going to get a value of type double. And whoops. Hmm. Where's that pleat fabric coming from? Hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe we need to tell it both. Set hip and fabric. New hip, new fabric. Yeah, yeah, it's that. I mean, I think that's legit. We, we definitely do that. So that's a derived value from these two fields. And, but if they've been set, I think as long as we're requiring people to have set their values before we get there, then we can, um, 
we can do these things. Let me close these for a little bit. Okay, but um, so where's this stuff? Okay, so I think at, in some sense, this stuff has to happen. Okay, um, and so somewhere I have to keep track of, well, do I? Do I have to keep track of the new hip? I don't think I do. I did need to keep track of the pleat count and the pleat width. So um, I'm going to say private set, uh, which is, you know, you, you can call, you can read it, but you can't write it. Um, bar pleat count. And I think this thing should be an int. We, we, maybe I, maybe I'll start double and make that a future change. Oh, I didn't do my to do's. Okay, so um, extract a system of equations from Pleat Designer. Okay, so I need that. And Pleat, I'm just going to call it count because there's just so little here. And width. All right. Um, Now, pleat fabric. Okay, so this is new fabric. Uh, maybe I'm worse off for changing these names, but got to do it. All right. Um, count as value is ideal hip. Well, this is new hip divided by tentative pleat count, and and it's really that dot round. Rounded. Okay. Um, and that is count. And then with is new hip divided by count. Okay. <sighs> no initializers. <sighs> well, maybe I can, I'm just gonna say you got one pleat of width one. We'll just default it. I don't think it's going to affect us because the way we'll use it, but um, it might. <laughs> All right, so I've sort of pulled this method in. Um, can I call equations.set hip? Hip with um, ideal hip and fa pleat fabric. Okay, so if I do this, I don't really need these things. Oh, dot as double. And because I now I have my required variables, then I know this is safe. Okay, but pleat count is it needs to come from the equations. Okay, so let's say pleat count is. Um, equations dot count but that's not a value so it has to be number okay and then pleat width is ideal hip d 
divided by equations, well, divided by inches, oh, sorry, number. That was bleak count. Okay, yeah. Divided by, well, I can say pleat count, I guess. Okay, so these two are um, no longer being referenced. I don't know why it's not complaining about them. Let's do a build. Weird, weird. All right. I don't think we need them. All right, so run tests. And this is so important from our visual point of view. We'll run the manual test too. Equation stop. Well, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, inches equation stop with. That was the point of putting it public <laughs> or semi public. All right, the tests are okay. I'll give them another run. All right, and run. Okay, so 26. Something's wrong. Hmm. Why is gap undefined? Plate width equals nil, or plate width is error, return nil. Let me just tab. Well, something is weird, weird, weird. That's 20. It's marked in red. <laughs> What's going on here? So, all right. Let's make this nine okay needs required values is false complete with is two point eight seven inches. Well, it's certainly not nil. This error is false. Uh, step over. Error mixing inches and numbers. Ooh. Have I messed up my. Hmm. That makes me think I've messed up something sooner than this. Okay, so pleat designer. Establish non required variables. Okay. Pleat count should be a number. Pleat width should be in inches. That seems right. Okay. Print pleat fabric. Uh-huh. Value. It's set. Number, okay, that's wrong. Print sets per pleat 
number is right. Okay, so set is not coming in as a number. That makes it sound like we did something wrong on the GUI. Uh, let's find fleet view. Set. So hip hopefully is inches. Designer dot set. Hmm. I mean, they're all values. Uh, I wonder, okay, let's, let's continue and take this breakpoint out. Continue. All right, nine inches. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, we sort of relied on these being implicitly. Oh, this is really. See, now we're getting inches everywhere. We weren't before because everything was treated as numbers for the most part. I mean, I can I can go back to that. Let's do that. So. This was treated as number before, I think. Can I find gap? Whoops. Hmm. So the reality is we have that value that can be inches or not inches or any of that stuff. But when, when it comes to it in here, we're relying on telling them or their intuition about what's a number and what's an in inches. Um, we probably should put set in inches and this in inches. So I have to refactor it as a pure refactoring for this to work. All right. But that that first step is not bad. Okay, where'd where was hip hip set? Okay, is excuse me, is that was not required? Okay, and this is set by set and sets per pleat. Okay, so all three of those compute off the same thing. Okay, so this part is okay. All right, now the tricky bit. It, I want to, well, let's, Do we want to do this one? Yeah, so let's extract this method's contents. <sighs> And in, into the equations. Okay, so I want to have a set 
set count taking the new count and right now it's a double okay and so set count well it should do all this kind of stuff okay this is new count I guess this is just count changing this. All right. Now we want to um, All right, we want to take possible pleat hip is ideal hip. So maybe we do need to keep that around. I don't know if these are good defaults. Cannot find round. Okay, it's probably in foundation. Okay, so this is hip. Hip divided by count. Okay, and then we want pleat width. Well, It's, it is a double. Um, if pleat width is less than or equal to fabric double, then we'll take it. Well, this, this all is really saying pleat width, sorry, width equals min. I think it's min, right? We want, if it's bigger than the fabric, we want the fabric fabric and possible pleat. Okay. We'll leave that for a moment. Um, we need fabric around. I think I'll default these all to one. Okay. And then we need to save them. Okay, so if you set count, we will, well, I can inline this. It's just getting simpler. I, I don't know, I should just, I should just put it in place. I know I'm, I'm mixing my refactorings, and that's probably not a good way to go. But at any rate, I'll take my chance on this one. And I've got set count. So if you called set count to um, pleat count dot as double, Again, we know it's there because if it's nil, we bug out early. All right, so we set the pleat count. Now these things, we have to get the we have to get the equation one back in. So pleat count equals equations dot count pleat width equals equations dot width, and these get commented out. Okay, and that sh oops. And I'm going back and forth between value and and these. Okay. Should pass. Well, what do I know? <laughs> okay, what's going on? Optional value inches. Oh, this is... 
We don't have those types right. Hmm. Are they all like this? Yeah. No, that one's... Right, somewhere where... I think what in effect is going on is our GUI is not converting to inches. It's converting to number. Let's validate that. Well, we know that's kind of the true because when I change, when I hit the typed the inch field in or the I in, um, it changed the result types to be the inches or whatever. And we don't really want that. So I think, I think, these tests are wrong about that. Um, um, I don't think that part's wrong. I think it's, it's, yeah. I mean, if I make this inches, something will, we'll try it. In a way, I feel like I shouldn't need to. Let's see if this gets the errors gone, but I feel like it's going to leave one or two, no matter what. Yeah, seven. Okay. Um, value complete width came back as number. Oh. I don't know. I feel like if I change all these, I'm going to end up changing them back at some point. <sighs> Just... I mean, this is the other way to do it, is to put as double on there and only compare the numeric value not worry about the types in each test. And I think that has some advantage to it. I think that's what I will do. Um, then we can we can set up another test if we want to enforce the inches and, and types on these things. Uh, the problem is, like in display, I don't want the, the word in at the end of it. Uh, type alias for inches, change that to be number. Yeah. Well, inches is not a type per se. I, I mean, I don't think it's... I don't think, like, this is not a wrong thing to say. I mean, that that will pass. Or I could pull out a helper. Maybe that would be a better way to go. Let's call it like assert, assert value. And you'll pass in something and it'll, it'll strip that off. Okay, let's do that. I don't, I go back and forth about putting them on the top or the bottom. Okay, so here, if I say assert value, uh, let's let's say check value. Uh, 
Maybe I could take that optional. Okay, we'll return if they're both equal. Otherwise, I guess we'll keep this as that. Okay, it'll blow up, but that's, that's okay. It would blow up here as well. All right, so, uh, didn't change the name, check value. Well, I've lost, I lost my coordination there. Um, I think the first one had an accuracy thing, right? Okay. I don't remember what they call it. <laughs> Accuracy. Well, that's a little different. See how this one does. Well, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, it's neat because it compares double. But why is that coming up zero? Um, hmm. Five eighths. Minus zero point one. I I don't updates please have plate with gap plate count with gap. Maybe I was better off without this. Mm. 
That's, whoops. Huh. Sorry. Okay. So, um, pleat. Let's see what the values are. If pleat fabric is five inches, pleat count is five. The hip is eight. Well, that's not going to be a good one. Um. Sorry. The set is five. So the fabric is five. If we set the count to five. Well, I guess here it's five, five thirds, one and two thirds. All right. And we set it to five, then we get 25 times one and two thirds. Oh. We set this to five. It already is five. Complete with is eight. Where's eight coming from? Let me compare this test. I'm feeling like I may have messed up something. That doesn't matter. Why is the gap? Well, it doesn't look like I changed anything else. It was eight. We set it back. This was five. Pleat fabric should be five. Pleat count. All right. Pleat count is set to five. Pleat width should be eight inches divided by five. No, is that not right? Hit. If the pleat count is five and the ideal hip is eight, that should be um Eight divided by five is one and two thirds, right? So the pleat width should be one and two thirds. Where do we get minus point one to start with? Um, okay, sorry, I have to use paper. <laughs> Um, most of the time I picked values that came out to even numbers, so they mostly don't care. Um, it may be that I'd be better off doing them all that way for consistency, but I don't, I don't know. In this particular case, okay, the hip is eight, the set is five, pleat is five. Okay, so eight divided by five should be the pleat width is one and two thirds. No, one and three fifths. Okay, um, should be the pleat width, which is smaller than the fabric. So it should be perfectly doable. All right, one and three fifths on a five inch. Okay, on a five inch set, if you do one and three fifths, you're gonna have three and one, three and two fifths left. Okay, which is um, three and four tenths, 
which is 34 tenths equals 17 tenths. 1 and 7 tenths on each side. 7 tenths is bigger than 3 fifths, which is 6 tenths. Um, so, I don't know, 7 tenths minus 6 tenths is 1 tenth. Oh, maybe that's the point 0.1. Okay. Point 0.1 of overlap. Oh. Minus for, for overlap and point 0.1. I'm... Something's wrong. <laughs> okay. Let's... Let's back out. I think that's... Painful as that is, I think that's the right thing to do here. Okay, there, and then... There. <sighs> okay. These things... Did we set the values coming back? Well, we will this time. Oh my, I did... I didn't check in that first one. Okay, well... <sighs> let's make sure tests run. Good. All right. We can do this pretty quickly. So this stuff, we're going to have to set, set hip and fabric. Let's just call it set hip, set required hip is double and fabric is double. Okay, and we'll need private, well, actually just private is probably fine. Private var hip of double, private var fabric of double. Okay, and then we'll set um, self.hip equals hip. Self dot fabric equals fabric. And we needed to give this a starting value. And we want this stuff. Okay, so pleat fabric is fabric. Number three is just three. Three point is probably more consistent. Um, count as value equals hip divided by that. Pleat count equals count as value. We need bar count. Okay. Um, count equals count as value dot round. Well, I'll have to move the round forward. Import foundation. Okay, this becomes width equals hip divided by count. Okay, so those are as we set them. Now, we're going to take those out. And we'll call equations dot set required. Hip is ideal hip. Fabric is pleat fabric. And then we still need to update pleat count is equations dot count complete with equals equations dot with all right now uh, these okay 
Five dot s double. S double. And then we turn them back in. Then this one, ideal hip. Oh, it's hard to work without the type system. All right, I'm gonna make it number. I think that gave us the, I think that's what we did before. Equation dot count. I said private set, I guess not. Okay. Try our tests. Okay, seven failures. I think because I made everything inches now, this is where we're going to get that problem. Now, is the value right? No. Hmm. What is the gap? What has gone wrong? All right, so we take the hip, fabric divided by three. So when you set this for the first time, 20, it's 20 and f set of six means fabric is six divided by three is two. The countess value is the hip 20 divided by pleat width two should be 10. And then the width should be Hip 20 divided by 10. That seems okay to me. Why? Now, is this one just the units? Okay, well, all right. What if I make these units? I don't think it should matter, but let's do it. Pleat is inches. Okay, it does matter. All right. We've apparently got this covered. All right. Um, so I feel like we saw something funny. All right. I, I think the thing we're going to see is inches written in the results. No. Okay. So we were fussing through these. All right. So I think to get this passing, let's do this again. I think the problem is somebody's getting um, a non-numeric value. Okay. Okay. Let's let's assign that assert again. Check value equality. Um, value. Well, 
actual of value question mark expected of value question mark accuracy um double equals that's kind of what we did by default okay i'm kind of putting this in one one check um if actual is nil and expected is nil just return no problem otherwise assert equal actual dot s double should equal um expected dot s double with accuracy equal to accuracy Now, I, I don't think that fixes it. Let's make check. Okay, this one should at least pass. This one should fail. But why he fails so much... All right, I am I am truly puzzled here. The, let's fabric. The count is right. The width is right. The fabric is right. So how is the gap wrong? Okay, well, this puts us back where we were on gap. Okay, so let's just run the one test. Maybe somebody else. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so people used gap. Let's print complete fabric that has double. One and two thirds, one and three fifths, one point six. Okay. All right. Now I'm stopping here. Let's look at the gap. Error mixing. Okay, as double doesn't know what to do with errors because we don't normally look at them that way. And it should be marked as different, but it's too bad it's not showing this. Okay. Um, let's change this. Okay, let's try again. Oh, we got. Cannot convert value to expect to type double. Let's check. Value equality. That, that, that. Error. 
Okay. Somebody in gap computation. Number three times fleet with. Okay. One of these things. Okay, pleat width is a number. That's a problem if pleat fabric is a number. And pleat fabric is inches. Oh. So. Pleat width really should be inches. I mean, that. Let's see what that does to things. Run tests. Okay, so print pleat width. Yeah, okay. Let's continue. this off and continue. Okay. Print designer dot gap inches. Okay. Yeah. Minus mm, zero point one. Okay. I'll worry about the display later. Because it's going to show inches, and I don't really want that, but... Okay. Two inches, 20 inches. Because I want them to just be able to edit the values directly. Okay. Um, so I'm going to call it acceptable on the design UI side, and... Working on this side. Okay, so this is um, um, made set required hip fabric. Some people write it like that. Okay. No, we'll just have to make sure everybody's being consistent, doing what they're supposed to. <laughs> okay. Now, we are ready to go back to pleat count. All right, so we want this body in a set pleat, set count. Um... I guess we can we'll keep it double. All right, now, um, pleat count. Okay, so this is count, self dot count equals round of count. Possible equals hip. Divided by self dot count. It is a double, so we don't need that. Pleat fabric is a double. And then this is width. Width equals pleat fabric. Okay. I cannot find plate fabric. Oh, it's just fabric. All right. And then we'd like to comment out these. And we want to call um, equations 
dot set count to be plate count as double. Okay, and then we need to assign pleat count equals equations dot count and that is a number and we need pleat width is inches of equations dot width okay so that affects a glow uh, well a field that affects a field that affects a field nothing else affects a field so my claim is that should be equivalent all right did i delete the code here yes okay And then again, let's run. All right, 20 and six, that's fine. Number of pleats, 12, 1 11 sixteenths makes it fine. But if I do eight, eight times, Two and a half. Now, somebody's these constraints are not making me happy either. Eight times two and a half, sixteen, twenty. I guess that's that's accurate. Let's make this three. Okay, we get adjusted. Okay. So I think that seems okay. All right, so um, make pleat count part of equations. All right, and now pleat width. Okay, so that's the contents. The method is set with All right, we need to capture first. Okay. And then count is hip well it's round of hip divided by width okay and then here well this should this should be fine so far because we're not calling it Okay, but if we do equations dot set width to width pleat width dot as double. Okay, and then pleat count is equations dot set no equations dot count. Okay. And this uh, count is always number. Now this can only affect count. All right. Well, 
What's your problem? Yeah, I suppose it should be private. Actually, I also should do... Um, What? They don't support that. Oh, how annoying. Okay. I kind of can't believe it, but... And we'll run this time and we'll look at changing the width. Somebody's still not right. Let's change this. Three inches. I wonder if they are expecting inches here. Yep. Oh, annoying. Okay. We're letting that one go, though, for the moment. <laughs> All right. Um, that seems good. Do we only add width? Yes. All right, well, let's see where we are on the equations. So I think this is th this is really the heart of what we were doing, and I'm happy with that part of it. <laughs> um, it doesn't worry about types. It just worries about the relationship that says, you know, if you change the hip of the fabric, um, we're going to adjust the count and the width, okay? So we're going to create that default width, and then get the count as best we can. Okay. Um, if we set the count, we're going to adjust that. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm liking I'm, I'm liking being able to distinguish these. New hip, new fabric, and not needing this.
Okay. Um, yeah, I'm liking that. Um, I think this can be... I'm not sure why this is tentative. Right, because we're, we're setting it... Oh, it's because they're rounding. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to inline this like we did before. I don't need that. Okay. Tentative pleat width equals fabric divided by three. Count is adjusted accordingly with follows from count. Okay. All right. I think that's accurate. All right. Now what about this one? Well, we don't need self done. Possible pleat with, let's just say, well, let's make sure tests are passing. Okay. Here, I just want to say with equals and I want the min of fabric or this. Okay, because if, if hip divided by count is bigger than the fabric, that that won't work. We can't have a, a pleat with bigger than the fabric allocated to the pleat. All right, and then this stuff goes simple. Okay, so count changes count and width. Width doesn't really change that. Okay, let's make sure this is all good. Yeah, so you got all three relationships here. Width equals hip divided by count. Um, is that ever possibly wrong? No, because it, it takes the fabric into account. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think let's, let's take that, uh, simplify, um, calculations. A little wimpy, but accurate. All right. But at any rate, I mean, this is the heart of the relationship between these three variables. There's a little bit of weirdness here. I mean, they're not completely symmetrical because of the rounding and the min and more rounding. But I think I think this captures it. If you if you set um, required variables, we're going to start over on count and width based on the fabric size, and the default box plate of three, um, divisor of three, and adjust. And it, if you set the count, we round it, which if we make that int, it may not matter. Um, and you take the min fabric and then width takes the rounded value. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that really does capture those, those relationships and sort of the priorities and everything else that we embedded in, in Pleat Designer. Um, did we, okay, we did update here, Pleat Width, Pleat Count, okay. Um, all right, let's take a break, and when we come back, um, I'm going to get these, this update in progress thing out of out of action. And let's see what we can do there. All right, so we'll take three or four minutes and uh, come back and improve it a little more. Welcome back. All right. We want to get rid of this locking stuff, the update in progress thing. And what I'm really going to do is push that over to the pleat equations. So what they're going to say is, um, while we're updating ourselves, don't don't let anybody adjust us. Okay. And I think, well, what I want to do, I want to make set required 
take a closure that does the actions it wants. Okay. And so it will, it will call set required that will lock the equation system only changes, um, are only changes that are a consequence of set required will be allowed until it finishes those updates, calls this code, and then it unlocks. Okay, so so while these statements will on their own call equation dot set count, um, they're going to be blocked out because equations is going to have a lock on it. <laughs> okay. Um, now again, I think we may have to coordinate. Well, no, maybe not. I think I can put the new lock in without without doing anything. All right, so let's make, well, I'm gonna put it up here. Private bar locked um, is false. Okay, and now this is gonna take a new argument. Um, this is, um, let's say action, nothing goes to nothing. Or do I say void here? I can, I think that's the more proper way. Okay. And I can do this. And that should still run. Okay, and now I'm going to, I'm going to lock it. No, I'm going to call, um, after you do all the updates, I'm going to call locked action with action. Okay, and locked action is another function, uh, locked action. It's gonna take the action, nothing goes to void, and do nothing, okay. Um, right, again, this nothing in this creates a problem. All right, now I'm gonna say locked, true do action locked equals false okay so everybody that calls locked action is going to go through the same same stuff all right so run the update call locked action uh, call the action locked and exit. Okay, is that, I think that's gonna be good. All right, let's, let's switch. Okay, so now I want this function to be here. I think I can leave this not update in progress here for a moment. Okay, so now what I'm saying is run the uh, update the required values, which has consequences on count and width, and and pull those back from the equation system, and then, um, well, it's sort of locked doing that. But I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll get an infinite loop or a, a deadlock. Let's make sure. I think the two locks are independent and compatible. Okay, now we want the same lock on the other two. Okay, uh, this is not, this default value is no longer needed. Okay, 
do required updates with lock. And set count is going to have an action in the same way. So I may as well take the same thing here. Equals nothing. And I think we can let ourselves do this. Variables not used, no harm. Locked action of that. And same thing here. Okay, so pleat count do this and pleat width. Now it might be reasonable to pull the width back too. I don't know, just for... Let's, let's do that. No, let's not. Let's, let's take our minimal steps. <laughs> okay, take out the empty things. Should be no impact because they're always called that way now. All right, and that's okay. Now we'll put this width in. Okay. Good. All right. Um, make count and with run their locked action to update fields. Okay, now the biggie. Uh, let's take out update in progress. Okay, I think this should be okay. All right, so that update in progress thing is now being done by the lock stuff in the equations. Uh-oh. Something's off. Okay. 
Okay. Can't tell if it's Why would this do that? Okay, well, it is. <laughs> Let's see this thing getting called. Okay, we'll step over. Whoa. Oh, we're not checking for nil. Establish non-required variables. Wait. This one. Okay, I guess that's okay. Set count is calling itself an awful lot here. Okay, we have to go back to this test. <sighs> Doesn't need set lock to true before changing the targeted value. Um, it should need to do it in the equations. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, it should not. I mean, something cl is clearly wrong, but um. These are only changing the local variables in the equations, you know, in the equations object. The the locked actions are their chance to update their side. So somehow, okay. well, okay, I guess we can see it. Plate count, call set count. Hmm. Oh, it needs to return if if it's locked. That's the thing we're not doing. Yeah. Okay. If if you call this 
and you're locked. <laughs> um, we need to return. in all these cases. So yes, I <laughs> need to check it at least. Oops. Right, because we originally we were checking if locked, you know, whatever that variable was called. If update in progress, and we need to do the same thing, check for update in progress. If it is, don't do anything. Otherwise, we just set it and set it. We never looked at it. So that was not, <laughs> not, not a good transition for me there. I deleted all those ifs and didn't put a corresponding one over here. All right. Well, let's see if that all works before I brag too much about fixing it. Okay. All right, and then I think I put something back in here. Yeah. That should be unneeded now. Um, all right. So we handle, um, I guess we remove unused lock variable from pleat. Pleat designer. Okay. Now, I want, this got slightly simpler, but not super simple. Um, one thing let's see if I can I think I can remove this. So it's a closure. All right, so we've got some duplication we can get rid of. In designer, This, these two lines get done a lot. All right, so let's, let's call it um, file private funk update count and width. All right, and that's this code. Equations is held by the class or the instance, so that's fine. Um, well, that should be no problem because we're not calling it. But I can. Like that, and then get rid of that. Hip fabric action, okay. 
And same thing here. And here. Now, all right, well, we did that. Um, remove duplication of update count and plate. Uh, let's see, now gap is yeah, we want, so, I mean, he's computed, right? He's, he's a direct function of the state of this object. Uh, same for most of these methods now. They either call the equation stuff if they change things. So, um, I guess if I put it in these terms, if I change this hip, we call set hip and required. If I change set, or sets per pleat, same thing. If I change pleats, we call number of pleats we call set count or set width. These are all derived from it. The reason we're getting question marks sometimes was because we were mixing inches and numbers. Um, I don't know. It, it. I don't know if they're pulling their weight. I really don't. I mean, they didn't make it easier to debug, that's for sure. Um, now, I would love to know how to do this. Hmm. Complete with his error. See, theoretically, Theoretically, that can't happen. I think we we eliminated this chance. Did we? Well, what if I set? Let's let's play around. <laughs> All right, now we're still, you're right, there's still an issue with gap. Hmm. Oh, oh no, required plate fabric is required. Um, Okay, let's put a little error message in.
Is it this one? If lead width not equal nil and Complete with bang dot is error, then print. I think that'll be okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, but if I if I'm doing that kind of thing, then um, like my my type system of inches versus numbers isn't giving me anything, and maybe it already isn't because I'm not doing it in the equations down where it actually could make a difference. Um, I don't think you need it in a way because in in the calculator you do for sure. Well, maybe not for sure, but it it, it seems more reasonable to me in the calculator that. You're trying to make sure their their calculations don't mix values and stuff like that. But in this one, we've we've pre you know we've pre built the equations in a way that they are going to stay consistent. So um, I'd be more inclined to just get rid of. I'd be more inclined to make these things go back to just being doubles, honestly, as as much as anything. I mean, I'm already almost kind of halfway there because I don't think it's. Uh, it's not pulling its weight and honestly this thing of the pleat count checking for nil all over the place is pretty darn annoying too if I just said you have to have a value there I mean that that almost that almost makes it work uh, maybe that that simplification might be a good thing to do but first I want to understand if these things can be errors coming back. I guess if if number of pleats were zero, what happens? All right, I think I think this is gonna come up with an error in that case. All right, let's let's figure out what's going on here. Okay, so we'll do twenty and six. And we got that question mark, so somebody should have printed. Why did that not print? It's not an error. Okay. I'll do six again. It doesn't get there. I'm still running. Eight. Okay. Is nil. Why would changing the set change that to nil? How are you? Oh, we're going to check for nil here. All right, let's continue. Feels like a suspicious amount of updating. Can I just pause? Right, okay. Um, um, Maybe I should do this more when I get here. It's not an error, is it? It's this computation that's yielding the error. Okay. 
So let's print complete. Width is complete width dot formatted dot inches. And count of fabric. All right, so number times inches minus inches. Oh, what if it's zero? Our old nemesis, right? Is that a problem? Well, numbers times inches is inches. Inches minus inches is either inches or zero. And it comes back and divides, which is either inches or zero. Right, okay, so let's run. Should print. Okay. It feels like a lot. Two inches, six. Okay, so fabric is not in inches. Let's check fabric. Set. Time sets per plate. Well, this is... Okay, what if I type inches here? it <sighs> okay um That tells me these things are not consistently inches. And that's because if you just type six, you've, you've typed a valid value according to our value parsing. Um, uh, so I wish I'd known this. <laughs> I wish I'd known I was going to feel this way when we did all that value parsing. Um, I don't think we want to accept I think the value parsing is okay but we want the value to be stripped of that hmm All right, where do I leave those prints? They run gap. Okay. Um, the the reason we need our parser is because you can type, you know, six and one eighths. Okay, so I can. Okay, leave that out. All right. Over here, I can type 6.1 slash 8. And I can type inches. <laughs> okay. Hmm. 
<laughs> oh my. Right. So I don't know if this means we need a new kind of parser that's only going to accept those. I do think this this is a requirement that like six and an eighth is. I think my wife just had a had a kilt that was six and an eighth inch set. Uh, fractions work with number. Yes, they do. Um, they. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it just ranked three. Yeah. So I think, I think maybe, maybe this as double approach would be the way to go. Um, but at some level, I think they should just maybe be doubles and, you know, we're, we're enforcing the rightness of the types by the equation system. You know, we don't care you know, it implicitly knows counts or counts and, and with certain inches. Um, well, let's, let's deal with it. But I think that's, okay, what do we have to have? I think we have to be able to convert, I think we have to be able to do our input conversion with the, with the, um, inches, sorry, with the fractions. So having the input format is, is okay. Um, in reality, well, they could paste I in, in, I guess, into a field and stuff would parse it. Um, but if we, if we just treat them as integers, when we need them. Complete count. Do we get anything out of value? Well, the field is, okay, so let's take ideal hip. It's published as a value so it can be edited as a value so we can do fractions. So that part is useful. Um, all the calculations, however, we could, we could do as double and convert them back to numbers. <sighs> Damn, do we ever want inches? I mean, this... I don't mind it here because you're not trying to edit it, but it gets in the way over here and people are going to forget it and then it's still going to be an issue. So if pleat count times pleat width, I, I would love pleat count to just be a double, but I can't. Maybe we need a parser that only handles numbers. I mean, like we have inches and we have yard feet inches. We could have dot number as as a top level um, style type for parsing. Um, but right, yeah, and we don't have a way to say like value dot number as as the type unfortunately all right let's let's do the as double thing i really would like to get rid of it if i could okay but fabric is um well what, let's go from the bottom set 
is a value if we always use it as double okay then we need um, the result well I don't know I could do inches I don't want to though this is going to break things or at least potentially yeah because anybody who wanted to pleat fabric was expecting a number now pleat fabric that could be a double What if I did this double? Somebody's going to break, I mean, compile time wise. All right, because complete fabric doesn't need to be a double here. Okay. Complete fabric. Um. Well, complete fabric, I guess if I, I I'm kind of undoing and doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, I'll turn that back to inches momentarily. And who else? Complete fabric times count. Total fabric. View Wait. Wait with a post is smaller. Make this double question mark. what it was to start with. Figures of value smaller. Value value if it's nil. It's okay. <sighs> I guess we could And the figure is nil, then we're going to return nothing. There's no error. Otherwise, let's wrap inches of bigger. Bang. Make this double. Complete 
fabric now is pure double. Do I want that? I mean, it's it's not even an exposed quantity. Um, blue fabric five. Yes, that seems right. These mixing, yeah. How many failures were we? 21. Okay, so we make pleat fabric be a double. Hmm. Total fabric. Do I care about these? Hmm. Gap. Who uses this? display it okay if I make it a double this gets hurt it takes a value let's let it take a double as well A string if it's not interpolating anything. Okay, um, where else? Designer topo fabric is nil, yes, nil. Inch is 60, just becomes 60. Pleat fabric. And this goes away. Complete count done as double. Okay. Okay, 
Ratio, double fine, gap, absolute gap is a value. Label. I don't think we use this overlap label anymore. Okay, gap is a value. I just want to do this. I don't know. <laughs> do I want to get them all switched over? That's the real question here. Who uses this? I think it's just used for... Yeah. Play view. Gap. Oh, we still do gap or overlap there. Okay. Let's make that one a double. Okay, does that work? This would this be better as who uses this? Eternal question. All right, lots of places. Okay. Yeah, that's that's doable. They like a double. All right. All right, let's try that one. Okay, so number three becomes three. Complete width is still one of these things. Inches of pleat fabric. Well, pleat fabric's already a double. And divide by 2.0. Okay. Gap is error. Well, anything legal divided by two shouldn't be a problem. Okay, pass double. Yep. It's not combining about those, huh? Is there... Uh, 
that is there or is not. Can we get to one of these values, right? That's the question. I don't think so. It's always got to be smaller than the width of the fabric. So it's not dividing. Nobody's dividing by gap. Complete validator gap message of gap. Some tests will probably be accessing it. Yep. Gap. I don't see a way around these. Okay, that's an output one. Let's see. I think we're getting... Our outputs are all no, no longer values. These two-way ones, we have to be able to um, to do them. Okay, let's see. Where are we on to-dos? Extract a system of equations. Yes, we did that. The thing we're doing now is, well, we're changing complete designer calculations to use doubles as much as possible. Okay. Now, I think the thing we need to do then, we had things coming out. Where's that update? We're going to make count. Let's make this be number and see what the consequences are. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let that change. If the only difference is inches versus number, that's not a bad problem. Complete width. OK. 
Okay. I guess adjusted hip is another one that could be a double. He's more of an output. Okay. Okay, let's do adjusted hip. Okay, just a hip style. Just a tip loses its number. Modifier adjusted hip. Um, they can be fractions. Oh, is that good question? Yeah, you're right. So if they can be fractions, we can't do anything about them. They have to be values if we're going to display them as fractions. Okay, so let's revert that. Okay. Um, let's make, yeah, as much as possible. Okay, so we will stop here. Um, I'm happy with pleat equations, so I'm glad with that part of the work. I'm a little frustrated with having to go back and forth from value to double and all that stuff. And so that makes me a little... a little not sure about things. But value does... I mean, it does have capabilities that we need, like the fractions, and I don't know if these error clauses are needed. All right, so let me add that to the to-do. Um, do we need error checks? Um, well, do we need to check for error values in Pleat Designer? Okay. Um, I think... Well, I think... Whatever we can do to simplify things, uh, in a way, leaving them all values was simple. But I think, I think, 
the closer they are to the plain type, the happier we'll be. Um, and maybe... No, if they have to enter it, it's one thing. If they have to display it, it's a thing. We could probably work up a display to, to fix that issue for adjusted hip, but um, I think we'll leave it there today anyway. It, it's it feels like we can we can be close, okay? Um, but I do think simplifying this stuff is is somehow going to simplify the other. I also wonder about the error messages, if we're doing that the best way. Um, we've got the validation plugged in on the UI. I, I almost wonder if the objects could do that too, if they would be better off. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm not sure we've, I'm, I'm sure we've reduced the overall complexity. I'm not sure we're simple enough yet. How's that? <laughs> All right. And we'll pick up there tomorrow, Tuesday, or sorry, tomorrow's Thursday already. My goodness. Uh, 2 to 4.30 Eastern, 6 to 8.30 PM UTC. And um, thanks for joining today and hope to catch you again. Take care. Bye-bye.